pulse of their patients when examining them, centuries before the Europeans knew about blood circulation. Women gave birth under the most hygienic conditions possible at that time. The era's source books picturing the implements used by Muslim surgeons show just how advanced their medical knowledge was. Women, too, were educated in the schools of science in the Islamic world, contributing their share to the advancement of science. Muslim scientists made some very significant discoveries in the field of optics and light. The first person to describe the anatomy of the eye in great detail was the optician Ibn el Haytam whose acclaimed research on lenses opened up the way for the invention of the camera. Muslim physicians also discovered the causes of eyesight impairments and carried out successful cataract operations a thousand years before the Europeans. The scientific heritage of Islam became the source of European enlightenment beginning in the 15th century. Christian scientists launched Europe's scientific development with knowledge acquired from their Muslim counterparts. Islam's light illuminated them too. One of the Muslims' distinguishing qualities rooted in Islam is their high sense of arts and aesthetics. The paradise pictured in the Quran is a place of the highest quality, finest taste, and a simply stunning grandeur. Muslims carrying this sense of artistry in their hearts created fantastic works of art, and the lands they ruled became the most modern and advanced in the world. As Islam continued to proliferate in all directions from Arabia after the death of the Prophet, it brought with it development and wealth. Wherever they went, Muslims took civilization with them. For instance, in Tunisia they designed a genial water purification system to meet the city's drinking water needs. Two great basins linked to one another were built to still the water. The impurities, either sinking to the bottom or floating on the surface, were removed and the water was channeled to the city through pipes. Muslim engineers built mills in order to carry water to the cities. The capital city, Baghdad, was the most stunning and modern city in the world. Its city plan and architecture were outstanding. One traveler who visited the city wrote of it, All the avenues of Baghdad are lined with gardens, parks, mansions, squares, impressive shopping arcades and Turkish baths. This beautiful city stretches out along the river for miles on both sides. Another important center of Islam was in Spain. The Muslim nation of Andalusia was the most modern country in Europe. The capital, Cordoba, 
was a splendid city with its architecture, orderly and well-lit streets, libraries, hospitals, and palaces. In the same era, the greatest cities in Europe, such as London and Paris, were squalid, dark, and disorderly. That is why Europeans visiting Cordoba were most impressed by the grandeur, culture, and art they enjoyed in the city. The city of Cordoba in the 9th and 10th centuries was one of the biggest and most exciting in Europe. We have descriptions of it by people coming and saying, all these flowers everywhere, this, this open street, this, this wonderful light coming down. Uh, northern cities were dark. Cordoba had running water. People lived in big houses. In contrast, in Paris, people lived in shacks by the side of the river. One of the few remaining splendid works of architecture is the Catholic Cathedral in the city center. This used to be a mosque and was later converted into a church. The interior of the mosque was aesthetically stunning and Christians coming to Cordoba were staggered by its beauty. In the um, 10th century, there was a Saxon nun with the unpronounceable name of Hrotswitha who called medieval Cordoba the ornament of the world. She was very, very taken with the place. And there you are, she's a Christian nun. One of the most splendid works of architecture in Andalusia was the El Hambra Palace, a magnificent example of Islam's art and aesthetics. In the sublime style of the palace, one could feel the high spirits awakened in people by Islam. The gardens of the El Hambra had sophisticated fountains made by making use of gravitational systems. The Muslim designers of the El Hambra were inspired by the Quran's descriptions of paradise. Besides architecture, the Muslims were also the most advanced people on the planet in terms of style and quality of the clothes they wore. The finest luxurious fabrics, the likes of which the world had never seen before, were woven on the Muslim looms. Fabrics and clothes produced by the Muslims were status symbols among Europe's elite. And the Muslims dictated fashion to the world. The Europeans were even to learn to bathe and to use soap from the Muslims. The high culture, fine taste, and deep thought God taught humanity in the Quran illuminated the whole world.
Filmimizin bu 